Welcome back to Sea Stories with Mr. Do-Right. I'm your host, Mr. Do-Right. And today's show, welcome to the suck. That's right. You might be saying to yourself, self, what is welcome to the suck? Stop talking to yourself. I'll tell you everything. Don't worry about it. There's no test. Maybe. What that's all about is a progression of mind states that you go through while you're serving. Now, since I was in the Navy, I'm going to talk about the Navy. But this may apply to you in a different branch. So check this out. Attention bubbleheads, sailors, and all military personnel. Enjoy truish, lighthearted, and funny adventures from life at sea, told by Mr. do Right himself. So pack your sea bags and rig a ship or dive. It's time for another sea story with Mr. do Right. I think they're ready for it. Take it away, Mr. do Right. Visit DoRightProduction.com, follow the Facebook page, and subscribe to our channel, shipmates. When you're in boot camp, you cannot wait to go to school. Because when you in boot camp, you are e nothing. You are a recruit, and hell, the only time you feel like vindicated and and like you part of the Navy is when they put the Navy ball cap on your hand. And that's at the end, after you finish um, what is it called, battle station. So, you know, the whole time you you feel, what's the word? What's the best way to describe it? Like nothing. And you can't wait to get out there. And you want to get to the fleet because that's what they call it. You hear, hear that all the time. Man, when you get to the fleet, when you get to the fleet, when you get to the fleet, then everything's going to be different. And so you're like, man, I can't wait to go to the fleet. But you ain't going straight to the fleet, especially if you already signed a job. If you get out of boot camp, if you get out of boot camp, you're going to go to some kind of school. Most of the time, everybody will say, man, I can't wait to go to school, man. Everything's going to be better once I go to school, man. It's going to be great once I go to school. Once you get to school, you're not necessarily in class. Usually, you're waiting class up. That means you're sitting around somewhere, mustering, cleaning up something until they got a, a, your class starts up. They have you enrolled in school, but there's a progression. There's already people there, and they got to move through the pipeline so your turn can come so you can move through the pipeline. It's almost like getting on the escalator. You just Not everybody can get on the same step. You gotta wait till your step come so you can get on it and move on up. And that's how it is at school. So when you're sitting around waiting to get in the class, God, the only thing you can think about is, man, I can't wait to get in class so things could get better. So I don't have to sit up here and mop these floors all day and rake these leaves all day and shine boots all day. Boy, you just couldn't wait. And so then the next my state comes. Now you're in school. You couldn't wait to get in school. Boot camp or waiting class up. You couldn't wait to get in school. Now your ass in school and guess what? I can't wait to get to the boat. Things are going to be so much better when I get to the boat because you found out that school is just like boot camp, just a little bit better. The only difference is they give you your own room with two or three other people. At least you're not sharing a room with 25 people. You know, so it's a little bit better. You get to go to the galley and talk while you eat. So it is a little bit better, but it's still, you still don't have that respect and freedom like you feel like you're going to have once you get to the fleet or the boat. So you do all your studies, you pass all your classes, you move your way through the pipeline. Finally, the day comes, they cut you your orders, you get your orders, and you're going to your first boat. Yes, going to my first boat. That's what I'm talking about. So now you make it down there to the pier. You don't know, Jack. <laughs> you get on that boat and your mind is blown. Wow, I'm on the boat. Wow. I'm on the boat. Oh. Everybody look at me cause I'm sailing. I'm on the boat. I can't believe this. I finally made it. And it only takes you, I don't know, you good for the first week. And then you really start seeing how things go. And you find out that they don't treat you as peachy keen as you thought they was going to treat you. Because your ass just came from school. You still a noob, you still a nub, and you're gonna be a nub for a while. 
So now you own the boat and it's gonna take you, I don't know. It takes it's gonna take you a year to qualify to get your 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 pen, your dolphins and stuff, and I'm talking about submarines, whatever. Whatever your situation is, that's what you had to do. Usually it takes about a year. And during that year, you you trying to show people who you are. You're trying to build that up that respect and everything. And it's it's a hard, arduous road, boy. You see that in a lot of wars. And if you military, you know that word. But you start moving up there, you start getting into your job, you get more and more responsibilities. And then you hit that next mind state. I can't wait to get off the boat and go to shore duty. Things are gonna be so much better once I get to shore duty. Because on shore duty, that shit don't go out to sea. Because your ass is out to sea every time you blink your eyes. You just, and you out to sea. Boom, they just drop you in the middle of the ocean. You out there all the time. And if you ain't out to sea, you in port fixing stuff Constantly, because everything broke while you was out to sea. So now you in port, trying to fix everything, waiting on the UPS man, bringing the port so you can fix this thing, because it's been down since y'all y'all came back and, and moored against the pier. Now it's fixed. It's like, man, finally it's fixed. Now I can get me a break. Burr, underway. Too late, buddy. You shouldn't have fixed it. But you ain't had a choice. You had to fix it. So boy, the stress is on you. You always out to sea. I'm ready to be home. I'm ready to be home with mama. I'm ready to be home with them kids. I could just do short duty, hand out basketballs at the gym. Everything will be fine. That's all I got to do. I can't wait until short duty, right? So then you finally get off the boat. Your last underway. And then they, they separate you from the boat. And the day they separate you from the boat, they pulling out the sea. All right, fellas, y'all take all. Y'all have a good time. Y'all, y'all been trained well. Y'all know what to do. Fight the good fight because I'm out of here. Pace, and you head off to your shore duty. You get to shore duty. You see what you're going to be doing. There's no basketballs. There's no gym. They ain't gonna put you in some shitty job in some shitty shop on shitty shore. But man, it's not out to sea. It can't be worse than the boat. There's no way it could be worse than the boat. And then after about, mm, I don't know. A week, you find out that yes, it can be as shitty as the boat. Because it's funny to me. I think it's funny. And I might be making this up. If you don't agree with what I'm about to tell you, leave a comment saying you full of shit. If you agree with me. Leave a like on the video, but once you, it seems like all the shitty people that was on the boat, you know, the ones that just made your life a living hell, you know, those guys, the ones that took credit for all the work you did, you know, cause like you didn't do nothing, they did everything, but they clothes was never dirty. Nobody ever racked them out and stuff. Or the ones that just, just shit on you all the time, just made it a business shit on you all the time. or. The, the ones that talk crazy to you all the time, you know, those people seem to go to shore duty a whole lot. And then you go to shore duty and you go to the command where all them people at. Oh my goodness. I didn't think it could be worse than the boat, but yes it can. So now you're on shore duty. You're doing your job and it's like, man, well at least I go home every night, sleep in my own bed, it ain't no big deal. I ain't sitting up here standing watch. I ain't gotta do all of this. I can, I can just swallow that crap and make it. I can do it. Then you get a month in, two months in, realize you gotta be there for three years, and then you hit that next mind state. You ready for this? I can't wait to get the hell out of the military. I can't wait to get out of the Navy. Oh my goodness, what the hell did I do? And you know what? I don't know, I don't know everybody. But a lot of people, from the day they go to boot camp, they don't necessarily regret the decision that they made, but they can't wait till it's over with. But then you got so much time ahead of you, it's almost like you have to you gotta treat it like you're in prison. 
Because when you're in prison, you can't think about the time. You just got to do it. You don't think about a whole bunch of other stuff. You just do it. Well, once you get in the military and you figure it out, holy shit, I'm in this joker for a long time. I just got to do it. And that's what you do. You get to that short duty, and you're like, oh, well, I ain't got but a couple of years of this. I'm just going to swallow this shit up, and I'm just going to do it. And you drudge through it. You drudge through it. You get there. You listen to the crap. Somebody always chewing you out. All that stuff. But one day... Your, your, what is it, the EOS? Is that what it's called? I'm not sure that's what it's called. MOS? PQT? But anyway, the day you're gonna get out the military is finally come. Yes, I can't wait. My day is finally here. Screw you guys. You, I'm out of here. You, 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 you cool. I got your number, I'll text you and stuff. And f you, I'm out of here. So they give you your papers, you get your uh, DD-214 and everything, you go to PSD, you flip them off, and you walk out the door and you free. Free. Freedom. I am a civilian again. Now mind you, when you were a civilian, things were so shitty that it made you want to go into the military. And now, your ass is happy that you're a civilian again. Oh my goodness. So you go find a job, you move or whatever you need to do, and you get to your job, and it's like, is this it? This is all we're gonna do? You gotta be kidding me. And the first thing you say, you hit that next mind state, the final one. Man, I show Mr. Navy. Boy, let me tell you about the time when we did this. And we did that. Man, we did some great stuff in the Navy. This is crap. We would have never got away with no stuff like this in the Navy. Y'all dudes suck. If we were in the Navy, this wouldn't be going down. And you start reliving your whole past that you was complaining about the whole time. Wanting to go back to the Navy. But as soon as somebody stick your ass back into the military, I guarantee you all the mind states will come right back. Guarantee. But if I'm lying, tell me I'm lying. If you believe me, tell me you believe me. But that's going to be it for me. <laughs> because, you know, I went through all those states and look at me. Now here I am on YouTube telling stories about the Navy. But when I was in there, I, was, I couldn't think about nothing else but getting the hell out. And now I'm out. I'm always thinking about being back in. So craziness. It's just craziness. I don't know. But we're going to have another video coming up later on talking about that civilian life and all that other stuff and blah, blah, blah. So we'll get into that. We, I'm, I'm trying to get into the mind state. The mind state of somebody in the military. All right. You know, we're going to do some thinking. Is it thinking or thinking? I'll let y'all think about that, and then we'll think about some other stuff, all right? And so, thanks for checking me out on Sea Stories with Mr. Do-Right. I am your host, Mr. Do-Right, and until next time, like, share, subscribe, peace.